Happy 2020 writers. I hope you all had a fabulous New Year's and last week it was super fun to share with you how my 2019 wrapped up and you guys seem to really love hearing how I went about crushing my top three writer goals but how I also dealt with some failure along the way. So in this video I am super pumped to be telling you all about my top three author goals for 2020 which like last week will encompass a major publishing goal and little spoiler it'll be all about my publishing plans and tentative timeline for publishing on wings of ash and dust i'm so excited i will also have a major goal for my platform networking and making friends and community and the third one will be about my business and income as a full-time writer and entrepreneur i also want to share like a word of the year which a lot of people seem to love to do and i think it's a great idea i just have the hardest time in the world just picking one word i mean author right come on it's like picking your favorite book or something but i did want to have focus and i sort of wanted to pull in some things that i learned from 2019 that i wanted to carry through and continue growing in in 2020 so instead of having one like theme word for the year i'm going to expand a little bit and have three, not only three words, but three mantras that I want to live by this year and sort of use as my compass um, as I go throughout the year and make sure that I sort of stay true to the heart of my goals and the heart of not only what I want to do with my books and my career, but who I am as a person and how I want my life to look in 2020. As a small spoiler, one of those mantras is to just take messy action, even when things aren't perfect. And I don't know if you can hear it. I'm going to try to put some music in the background just in case it's too loud but my neighbor is cutting down some trees right now so we're gonna have a little bit of noise and normally I would so be the person that's like okay I guess I'm just going to record this tomorrow because it won't be the quality that I want it to be but I just need to learn to not be as perfectionist as sometimes I am and to just take messy action and to get you guys this content even when the conditions aren't perfect so a little spoiler for one of those mantras but hopefully you can't hear the noise too much. Also, last thing I wanted to share before we get into my goals is to actually share that I am running a challenge on Instagram right now called Author Goals Challenge with some of my patrons that loved setting our goals in my Patreon group last month. I have sort of an eight step strategy that I used last year that I'm also using this year and I explained to them what each of those things were and gave them a workbook so that they could come up with their own goals and not only goals but like a step by step sort of game plan throughout the year, finding accountability, all that kind of stuff. And they loved it so much that they were like, let's run a challenge on Instagram to help other people do this even more. So it sort of follows some of those steps and it's going to be a lot of fun. So we are going to start that challenge on this date here. And I'm putting this date because I don't know when I'm going to get this video out. Hopefully it is at least a couple days before the challenge hits, but we would love for you guys to join us and to not only set your goals, but to also meet a ton of writerly friends to sort of go through the year with and be accountable to each other and encourage each other as you try to accomplish them. Ooh, they stopped cutting trees for a little bit. So let's keep recording um, and go into my three mantras. The top three mantras that I want to live by sort of as my compass this year, and then we'll go into more specific goals is number one, I want to live with unified purpose or focus. And basically this has come about because since I started my author journey, um, I used to have just like a whole list of like 20 goals that I wanted to accomplish. And it was hard to know which was the priority and just what I should be focusing on. And even though I got a bunch of stuff done or maybe I didn't, I didn't really know if I was being a success. And so that's part of why I narrowed down to three main goals, but I still have each of those goals and sometimes they work independently of each other. And then I have to figure out, okay, which one is most important to to get things done for and so this year I sort of want to take those three main goals for publishing platform and income and really find a way to unify their purposes more than I am already and what I mean by that and I'll talk a little bit about this when I show you the actual goals but for example I think I want my publishing goal to be the main focus this year that doesn't mean that I don't want to keep doing my business stuff or doing my platform stuff but I want those other two things to more support the main publishing and writing goal. So I'm going to talk a 
a little bit about how that looks like when I get into my bullet journal and show you sort of how that's broken down. But I think overall for me, that's going to help me not feel so scattered and so stressed sometimes of just feeling like I'm being pulled in multiple directions. And so I'll show you guys that in a little bit. The second mantra I want to live by this year is sort of a twofer that combines the phrase fail faster and messy action is better than no action together. And I couldn't pick between the two because I just love both of them so much and they really complement each other really well. I've talked about both of them in recent videos. One comes from my writer's mastermind group and is a phrase that we use a lot. And the other is from my critique partner, Bethany Atazada. And basically I just don't wanna live with fear this year. I want to just create and to have fun and to not be afraid of failure because as I talked about in a recent Instagram post, failure is actually your friend, not your enemy. And if you are failing, it actually means you're growing because you are taking steps in a direction that you weren't before. So I want to keep learning from my failures and I want to keep telling myself, get through the failure so you can get to the success. Fail faster. And also, like I said earlier in this video, messy action is better than no action. This is mostly going to apply to social media and even YouTube. I think sometimes I spend hours and hours and hours on crafting the perfect YouTube video for you guys. And it's actually the videos where I vlog and like are sort of chatty like this one that it seems like you guys actually like even more. So if I'm totally off base on that, definitely let me know. No matter if it's super planned out or just chatty, I always try to give as much content and value to you guys as possible, but I would love to just create that same kind of content and not spend as many hours as I do trying to make it perfect. Because in essence, I could be getting a lot more content out to you guys if I wasn't so basically afraid of putting out something that might have some flaws in it or not be like super professional. This is sort of also going to apply to my writing, but only in the sense that I think sometimes I stifle myself in the writing and editing process because again, my brain just goes to this needs to be perfect the first time. And while I would never put out a published book that I didn't feel like was my absolute best work. There's so many steps that it takes to actually getting there that if I don't allow myself to just try and go for it and be okay that it's not perfect the first time and know that I'm going to need feedback and more editing and all of that, then I'm never going to get there. So except for the final, final product, I definitely want to apply this just for the process of getting the book out there so I can move forward and actually get this book out to you guys. And the third mantra I'm really going to try to live by is to have a rhythm of rest. And for me, I thrive off of creating. I thrive off of ideas and just doing new things like this challenge we're starting and just all of these different things I do with Patreon and my business and stuff. I, I really do thrive off of that, but I also realize that I take on too much, that I just don't have this rhythm of rest. I have a great rhythm of work. I have a great work ethic and I get a lot done, um, but I really have been negating putting in rest and making that a priority and not just rest as in sleeping or taking naps or just even reading a book, but just a real soul, true rest. And I did a whole post on my Patreon that anybody can view if you want Want to check out what I mean by true rest because that could be a whole video in and of itself. But basically, um, a big part of implementing this rhythm of rest for me, one part of it is to actually be shutting off my social media notifications, which I started doing in December and has been so freeing, you guys. Um, and the second thing um, is to have at least one day a week where I'm just not on social media at all. And this is um, because I can just get addicted to not just being on social media, but just interacting with you guys. And it can honestly get to a place where it's not just about making relationships anymore and interacting with you guys. It's about validation and it's about chasing numbers and all that different kind of stuff. And I just don't want my life to be ruled by that. I haven't gone off the deep end yet and gotten to a really bad place, but I just don't want to get 
to a bad place. And the little things that I've implemented in December, like taking one day a week to just shut everything off and to not have my notifications on, I get to decide when I'm in the social media world. I get to decide um, when I am putting aside time for my family and putting aside time just for me personally and not just my author goals, but my personal goals and my emotional and spiritual well-being. So I hope that encourages some of you. Um, but we are going to get into my actual writerly, authorly goals right now. So we're going to go over to my bullet journal and I'll show you everything there. Okay, so first of all, you might be surprised to still see this bullet journal. This is the one I used last year. I still love the cover. I actually looked for um, journals that were by the same company and I didn't like any of them quite as much as this one. Plus I had about half the journals still not used. So I was like, why am I gonna spend more money and waste more paper just getting a whole nother journal? So I'm trying to conserve a little bit and we're using the same journal. I did add um, 2020 to the front page here and I'm just using like the same kind of format that I used last year. So I was able to like sort of pre um, kind of pencil in and plan what each page should be going forward and it fits. So I'm like, you know what, we're just gonna do this. And what I did is I basically mirrored out the same layout. So this is my future log and sort of overall layout for um, all 12 months and um, recreated that here for 2020. It just has main events um, and things I want to remember. And then um, here I just track my social media numbers, which I will do again. Then I have my monthly spreads um, that again, just have like main events and things I wanna be thankful for. You guys saw last week that I shared um, my gratitude log and this was really fun to sort of go back to each month and then um, sort of transfer the main things into that log. So that was really cool. And then I have the month goals here and then um, I do weekly spreads um, going forward and just put the main goals for the whole week up here and then day by day as I go through. That continues all the way through to the end of the year. And then I did a recap sort of for 2019, which I shared in last week's video again. Um, and then I didn't share this, but these were the books I read because I just wanted to log that a little bit as well as on Goodreads. But now, dun, 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 this is my 2020 goals game plan. And um, I want to hide some so we can focus on one area first and then move on to the rest. But let's just really get into this. So my first main goal again was publishing and um, my main goal for this year is sort of a twofer of securing a mentor or agent by the summertime uh, for Wings of Ash and Dust, which I really have no control over if this actually happens, but my plan sort of mirrors how I want to try to get there. Um, but the other flip side of that is if this doesn't happen, and I know everybody's going to sort of comment and be like, that's unrealistic to get a mentor, well, maybe not a mentor, but maybe an agent agent by the summer. Um, and that's okay, because um, if this doesn't happen, I think I'd like to move ahead to self publish on Wings of Ash and Dust by early 2021. And you'll see that I even have some stuff covering here that I'm not ready to share. Um, but I just have so many marketing ideas and like different things that I would love to do with this book um, that would sort of not work out if I was traditionally published. Um, and I'm not going to go into to all of that quite yet. But the more I think about it, the more excited I get about those ideas. And I have so many friends that have self-published before um, that um, have already said, yeah, if you go this direction, I would love to help you. So I just feel like both of these options I'm like equally excited about right now. But the main thing is I'm ready to get this book out to you guys. So if I can secure um, even just a mentor this year to start going in the traditional publishing um, timeline um, to really sort of glean from someone who's already in the industry and to um, sort of get their insight and get their help in finding an agent. Um, I would be fine with that and then this would this would all change for the self-publishing route but um, an agent would be really great as well and I know that that means that the book would be published probably in more than a year um, because traditional publishing is always a lot slower but if this sort of doesn't come about 
out. Um, I would love to traditionally um, query and publish some other books. But again, I have so many ideas for this specific book. And I don't know what you guys believe. I pray a lot and I'm just praying about this whole process and feel at peace about this plan. Um, it can change, of course, um, but these are my goals and I'm shooting for them. So let's talk about how I actually plan to get there. And you can see that I've um, come up with steps for sort of both processes that will mirror each other month by month. And um, it's sort of separated by four different quarters. So I can sort of break apart the year a little easier as well. And I do that with my other two goals, as you'll see when we get there. Um, so I think I'm going to do this month by month um, in January, which is this month. I'm going to be editing um, with the original beta feedback I got last year. I did do some of this when I entered uh, the book in Pitch Wars, but I didn't do it super extensively because I didn't have a ton of time. So I'm going back into editing this book in January um, to, I'll just say it right now, to hopefully submit to Author Mentor Match in February. So again, this is the traditional uh, track here. Um, but in January, I'm also going to be doing research um, for not only querying, which I guess is more traditional, I should put that over there, um, so agents and publishers and stuff, but also doing research for self-publishing. So that would be getting my own editor and that would be um, finding cover designers and stuff like that and just doing all of that research so I know who I want to contact when I get to that stage later on. So that is January. Again, in February, I would love to apply for author mentor match that would be traditional track but then um, at the same time I would love to just get maybe about five new beta readers to read the edited version of uh, the book that I would have done in January so to sort of do like a fast read and get some more general feedback just make sure that there, there, there aren't any big things that I still need to fix um, and see if I am ready to start going forward um, in self-publishing after that beta round in March for the traditional track again there is pit mad um, and that is actually once a quarter so I put those all in there and this is just another opportunity to pitch my book um, to actual agents through Twitter and you can find out more on the pitch wars pit mad website um, but I'm definitely looking to uh, pitch my book that way as well and at the same time I will be editing again with um, the second round of beta feedback uh, for quarter two I am going to be doing a lot of querying for the traditional uh, route um, and I'm also going to be working on Project Snow which is the second book um, I wrote in uh, NaNoWriMo this past November and so you can see here I've also marked um, just little shorthands for different writing events so you can see here C1 is Camp NaNoWriMo 1 so that just helped me to remember like hey what am I going to be doing for Camp NaNo and so if I'm not doing something for on Wings of Ash and Dust at that point, and I'm just waiting to hear back from agents, I definitely want to be working on my second project. At the same time in April, um, I'm going to be um, contacting and hopefully booking an editor and cover designer for um, my self-publishing track. And here I would try to find people that I would be able to say, hey, I um, am sort of on the traditionally publishing track, but I am really interested in possibly self-publishing. Would it be okay um, to sort of book a time with you in a few months? And I will let you know soon if I'm really going to need that spot and if not you can give that spot away and see if I can find um, people for both of these things that would be willing to do that. I've been told to also book especially these two people about uh, three months in advance so um, I've worked that into my schedule. I also have BookCon here and there is another Pit Mad um, in June. Then uh, in quarter three in July is another Camp Nano. It's the second one so I'll be continuing to query but I'll also be pre-editing the book for um, my editor that I've been booking and that will also help me in traditional publishing anyway um, just doing some more edits there and then possibly starting to work with the cover designer um, a little bit um, and then in August um, I'll just sort of at this point probably just be keeping my eye out to see if there's any agents responding positively here um, so I might not be sending out new queries at this point um, but just keeping my eye out and then um, 
I will send the book to um, the editor I choose by this month as well. There is another Pit Mad, and I've sort of marked Pit Mad, and then Pitch Wars is somewhere in here as well. And I just want to have note of these things just in case the self publishing track um, gets pushed down, and then I still know that I have other opportunities to query or send to agents um, if this stuff gets delayed for whatever reason. And then in September, I will be looking to complete whatever editor notes I get back. Quarter four, I have totally blocked off um, for the self-publishing track and just saying, hey, if I am at this point and nothing has sort of gone through with a mentor or an agent, I'm gonna move forward with self-publishing. This is where I'll be doing formatting and setting up pre-orders and proofreading and setting up a street team and uh, cover reveals and arcs and um, just sort of like pre-book launch stuff, promoting, marketing, doing all those fun things and I've blocked off three months of that um, to just really give myself enough time to do everything um, again I'm not going to reveal exactly when in the new year I want to be publishing if I go the self publishing route but you can tell it's probably pretty soon after this so yeah that is sort of my thoughts again i've watched a lot of uh, my friends videos on self-publishing i'm continuing to ask questions um, to sort of lay out this timeline i would love if any of you have self-published and you have some thoughts about my timeline maybe i'm not giving enough time or i'm giving too much time i would love to know that um, and anybody who has gone the traditional publishing route and um, you want to give me any feedback here i'm sure i'm going to hear something about this querying process um, but again, uh, I'm just like, I'm at this point that I could really go either way with this book and I'd be really happy. So that is super exciting. I know a bunch of you are probably like, that's really what I want to hear. But if any of you also want to hear about my other two goals real quick, um, I'm really excited to also be um, focusing on these other two goals. But again, like I said earlier in this video, I want to have unified purpose. So I want these two things, my platform um, and my income to be supporting my publishing goals and so now I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that okay so for my platform and sort of networking and community and all that kind of stuff um, I really want to simplify um, my content making process and be more purposeful in the content that I'm sharing again that sort of ties into supporting this goal and so I still want to be doing about four YouTube videos a month and also at least four uh, Instagram posts a month um, I'd like to be on Twitter at least during the weekdays um, at least once a day doing a newsletter about once a month and this is sort of my minimum if I have more time I will do more but um, these are just sort of the rhythms that I want to set up and then this is sort of a brainstorm of the content and you'll see here that each topic or each idea that I've written down sort of mirrors either um, my sort of book publishing dreams but then also a little bit of my income goals because the income goals will uh, affect some of the things that I get to or not get to do with publishing especially if I go the self-publishing route um, this will be uh, really feeding into um, like the book uh, cover designer and the editor and all of those kind of things so as I am sort of editing this month I would love to do a little bit of an editing series I'm still very very much learning as I go here um, but I am learning things as I'm editing and so whether that's vlog style or more like top tips kind of style let me know what you guys would love most and maybe what your struggles are or what questions you have um, in the comments today so that I can be planning out what um, I want to be sharing with you guys about editing this month also doesn't mean that I won't do videos about other things but I'm just trying to like sort of set up a focus for each month so that it's easier for me to plan my content and then content on Instagram and Twitter and my newsletter and all of those kind of things will unify and sort of go together in some way it won't be all the same exact content but they will all complement each other so my brain can sort of stay focused in one place and then my content can sort of spill out of what I'm learning in this process so um, let's go a little bit faster so we have editing um, I'd love to share about my experience applying for author mentor match 
and just any questions you guys have about that. Then um, there's also just prepping for either querying or self-publishing. So I was thinking about sharing, again, my experience, tips, different things like that. Then I was thinking of sharing, yeah, my experience um, booking things like an editor and cover designer um, and maybe some vlogs for NaNoWriMo and Camp, Camp NaNoWriMo as those things come up. Um, I'd love to continue talking about websites and newsletters and platforms and because that's just something that I've always done in this channel you guys have really enjoyed so if you still want to learn more about those kind of things let me know what kind of platforms you want to grow on or what kind of questions you have about websites or newsletters so that I can specifically um, plan and create videos that help you guys with those topics. I'd also love to talk even more in depth about querying and also entering PitMad. Um, if I get to go to BookCon or any other writerly events this year, I would love to um, do vlogs about that. Uh, here's Camp NaNoWriMo again. More stuff about newsletters, websites, and platforms. My experience working with an editor and cover designer. Doing vlogs for Preptober and then hopefully book promotion stuff if I go self-publishing. And just fun like giveaways and character art, street team stuff. All those kind of things would then sort of be done here. And maybe giving tips on how to do these kinds of things yourself for your own books um, as I learn them as I go. So again, let me know what topics in here you're most excited about. This is all subject to change, but I just wanted to get an initial plan so I could do some brainstorming and pre-planning and pre-recording for you guys. And if there's anything else I am missing, please let me know in the comments. Again, I always love to do content that is fun for me, but also really valuable for you. Finally, for my income goal, um, I'm not going to reveal the actual step-by-step -step specifics because there's some things in here that I want to keep a surprise for later in the year. Um, but basically, if you didn't already know, I write and do entrepreneurial things full time right now. And that is all thanks to my wonderful husband, who I know I've talked about this a lot, but he just carries most of our income right now. But it is super helpful for me to at least make um, a portion of that. So we've budgeted that out. And um, I have a certain goal to make per month. And I've said sort of quote unquote, passively, because who doesn't want to make their income more passive over time, especially so I can focus even more on writing, but I can still sort of stay in the writer circle um, in my entrepreneurial stuff and not have to take an out of the house kind of typical work for somebody else job if I can help it. Another reason why I do this though too is I really love expressing my creativity in so many other ways than just writing. Writing is the main thing, but I think all the other creative things that I get to do through my side jobs um, actually helps fuel my creativity in different ways so that I can come back to writing afresh. I also have always loved teaching and mentoring. I used to do that um, as a job in my church with teenagers and also young adult groups. I've taught music in the past and other things that I have just had so much fun and it's just so rewarding. So I love that I get to turn all of those passions um, into my entrepreneurial sort of side hustle jobs that I've created for myself and hearing how much people really love and get out of the things that I offer is just amazing and the icing on the cakes. So all of that together I'm just super excited to continue doing things like Patreon and mentorship through there doing my author website boot camp. I'd love to add resources and bonuses to both of those things throughout the year here. Obviously, I also have YouTube, which gives in a little bit of income. And then I even have a couple other ideas that I have put in here in case I have time. But all of those things I want to serve, again, the bigger goal. Um, so this timeline and things that I have um, under here will be flexible and changeable um, as it serves this goal here. I also just want to add that this is what works for me. This is coming out of who I am and what I love and I know there's been a lot of conversation lately in the author tube community about if you should be selling anything else besides your books or promoting that but I just honestly think that we're all a little more diverse than just writing and if we want to pursue those other things and make a living out of it so that we can support our books then that's okay and if all you want to do is just write and you need to take a side job in order to do that that doesn't have to do with writing please never feel pressure from any of us that choose to do side hustles or writerly services that you need to do that because that's so not true because everybody is different everybody 
everybody has their own path and as long as you're being true to who you are and chasing after things because you're passionate about them because you love helping people i personally think that that's okay maybe i'm crazy <laughs> and in the same way don't look at my bullet journal don't look at my goals don't look at my timeline and feel like you need to be doing what i'm doing i only ever share things that i am doing in the way that i'm doing them because i know how much that has helped me and i offer courses and do different services like that also because i know that i've taken courses and mentorship opportunities and different services that have helped me so much so anyway Anyway, wherever you are in the process, if you are a full-time parent, if you have a full-time job, if you have a side job that doesn't have anything to do with writing, or if you choose to have a side hustle for your writing that offers services or anything else, you do you. I'm going to support you and cheer you on. And I hope we can just all do the same for each other. And um, I hope that all of this just gives you some inspiration, maybe some ideas that maybe you haven't thought about before. And you guys always know if you have tips that I'm not following or you have a better way of doing things like let me know that in the comments too we are all learning from each other now I have this 2020 goals game plan here and just real quick for anybody else who is a bullet journaler or wants to know how you can sort of take all of this and, and make it really practical in your sort of day-to-day month-to-month life um what i did obviously first is separate it into the four quarters of the year so it's a little more um bite-sized and i do plan every quarter i have a page in the bullet journal later where i will do sort of a recap of each quarter to see where i'm at and if i have to adjust anything but really month to month this is what it's going to look like again i will have a month spread that's more of just events and gratitude and just keeping track of life and being able to look back on things and then um, i have my goals sort of separated into author stuff and business stuff here and then personal stuff here so you can see that i do have personal goals under um, health rest and fun spirituality and family and friends and then um, i have publishing platform and income and i take what is on um here for each uh, month so for january i would take these two here and then expound on them in even more detail um just sort of going step by step of like how am i actually going to get there same thing for platform and income and then um this is what is going to get started next week um with uh then taking everything that is in these and breaking it up in two weeks so i will figure out what i want to do in my first week for both um, author and then personal stuff and then I will take one day at a time make that list as long as it needs to be or as short as it needs to be for that day um, and then the next day I will write Tuesday and start that list and sort of gradually work each page organically as it goes well those were my top goals for 2020 but now I want to hear about yours and so in the comments I want you to put in your top three writerly goals for the year you can put them into categories like I did um, or they can just be really big top three goals and I want you to just say three and put that there for accountability because again it is so much easier to actually be a success at those goals if you are narrowing down your focus so definitely try that and if you want even more help with your goals and creating a game plan and meeting other writers don't forget to join our author goals challenge on Instagram it's gonna be super fun and in the meantime you're looking for other writerly videos like this one definitely check out one of these two and we'll see you there